All right, well, we're all ready to go now for the coloring. We've spent the last tutorial showing you how to reshape a simple square into a complex shape, and now it's a matter of going through the repetition of colorizing this. Now, I, again, I make this whole thing starting out white because as I go along and I'm clicking points, if I, if I click on the node and I see it jump to white, I know that it's in fact a color no, node that needs to be uh, still colorized. So where are we? Okay, here we go. We do have our mesh on its own layer. That layer has been put into wireframe preview, and the back layer is locked. So I'm going to move this out of the way now. And I'm going to zoom in nice and close, and I'm going to start colorizing. Now, as I colorize, I'm going to just try to say exactly what I'm doing for the first couple, and then I'm just going to race through it, because it really becomes annoying to hear what you have to think as you as you're doing it because this is a real tedious process I always start off by clicking on the clear arrow and then my eyedropper why because that way when I hit the uh, command or Apple key it jumps to the tool I want so I clicked first on that first point that I want to do and now because this is on the edge I am gonna just sneak back a little into the image and grab some of that color but now what I'm doing is I'm holding down command, I'm clicking on it, letting go of the command button, and then eyedroppering the tone that's underneath into that node. Click, let go, eyedrop. Click, let go, eyedrop. And I got some of the bikini color there and I have to correct it. Click, let go, eyedrop. Click, let go, eyedrop. Okay, I have to just make sure that I don't get that bikini color because I have the, I have the nodes tucked in. Okay, click, let go, eyedropper. Okay, now I think I can go a little faster and let's see what happens. Now if I show you this really quick as I'm doing this, I'm just going to go to preview mode. You can see the colors are starting to come in and you can see this this node right here has a little bit too much of that color right there. So we're going to correct that. We're going to click there you go and if I go back you can see that that's been fixed so now let's go I'm gonna keep going now this whole process is very tedious you really have to have the patience I mean in the first tutorial I showed you the wireframe and I think you can really get a sense that it, it's very tedious to have to do what I'm doing right here to a whole image. It literally took 12 hours of clicking nodes. Now if you want to do that and if you like doing that because it has a nice final uh, you know, look to it, that's great. And there's definitely a time that you have to use mesh to get the hyper realistic images. Unless you're just brilliant and I'm, I guess I'm not that brilliant. I can't do it. So uh, when I have to get hyper realistic images of uh, products or packaging or components for packaging that are going to be blown up very large I typically go to the mesh and mesh out all the colors but I still use the blends uh, for the vast majority of what I do if I'm drawing my cars if I'm drawing uh, extra pieces into even a mesh like this like I think her thigh and some parts of her breasts and parts of her arms uh, I went back in and laid in blended highlights and shadows because I wasn't happy with the uh, referenced uh, art that was underneath. Now this referenced art that I used, I found a beautiful photograph online and I took that photograph and reworked it and illustrated it in Photoshop to give it more of an illustrated look. Uh, basically re-rendered the whole thing. Uh, after everything was done, then I brought it into Adobe Illustrator to do the mesh. Now, why do that? Why, why even bother, you know, to take what was a photograph and try to do a photographic uh, thing? Uh, again, for mostly for product shots and mostly for clients that require a, a vector image that's photographic. Um, the other part is whenever I see artists doing this process they tend to knock off the photograph verbatim and it doesn't really come out looking exactly like the photograph it kinda looks like monsters 
the people look a little weird. Uh, then it's not a perfect image, and uh, you know, eyelashes, eyebrows, and things like that always seem to have trouble. And I think I've gotten a tremendous amount of that taken care of by retouching my Photoshop photo first or re-illustrating it the way I want. That way I end up with a far superior image in that it's more illustrated and it's more original. Uh, you're more than welcome to take your photographs of your own reference, to compose the reference any way you want, but as a uh, just working with uh, a photo, you do have your restrictions, blurry, pixelated images, um, sometimes the colors are not quite right, you do lose detail uh, here and there, but you know, that's uh, your license to add the details in that you need, and uh, you know, make it as good an image as you can. So I'm just going to complete this last line and we'll zoom out a little and you'll get a sense of uh, what it what was happening. So I'm just going to zoom out two clicks. I'm going to pull it down so we can see a little more of it and I'm going to go now to the preview mode and look at that. That's the new arm being laid in. There's the old arm. Actually, I'm sorry. There's the new arm, and you can see the white area still down here. There's the old arm, the new arm, the old arm. You can see some shadows changed up here, and I could possibly, uh, you know, if I, if I thought that they needed to be changed, I still have control of going in, clicking on any one of these nodes, and colorizing it to any color I want. You could see I just did that in preview mode. I changed it to white, um, but that's it. That's how simple it is to pull the color from your referenced photograph or your referenced artwork or image from underneath on the first layer and pull it forward into the mesh nodes. Thank you.